Hi, this is Dr. Gary. Welcome to our weekly tune-up. During this week, I've talked to several people, a lot of people in fact, that are saying they're depressed and they're on medications for depression for just about everything you can think of. And there's some legitimate reasons for some of this depression and you can make legitimate reasons out of any of it. However, most people that are on antidepressants and serotonin uptake inhibitors most of the time can work through things without it. And I strongly recommend it if you can. If you're on some of these things, first thing is, I'm not saying get off of them. What I'm saying is go to your doctor and ask if there's a protocol that you can have them prescribe that would safely back you out of taking those. And then there's a lot of things you can do in the process to help you with this anyway, whether you're on antidepressants or not. Depression comes from a fight or flight mechanism in the body that is chemically driven. It's either chemically driven by our thoughts or sometimes there's an atrophy or a deficit in the ability the brain has to produce the proper serotonin, neuropeptides, endorphins to create a balanced mood. Most people don't have a balanced mood. There really is no such thing as the perfect mood. But most people can reside in a very easy way of living where the highs are not too high and the lows are not too low and that's called balanced these days. Today what I want you to think about is if you're a little bit depressed or if somebody said you're depressed or they've diagnosed you as depressed whether it's borderline personality whether it's manic depressive ask yourself do you think you really are and when did this start and when did it really happen to you if you've always been that way maybe there is an issue but if all of a sudden it starts I can probably guess that there is an event in your life that triggered it. And many times we can go to the hospital and go through surgery and come out depressed and we stay depressed for a while and then what happens is that becomes our mental cocktail and sometimes it's hard to get out of it. And doctors wanting to do the right thing will prescribe some kind of a prescription to help balance you out. What I'm asking you to do is really pay attention to what's going on, first of all, inside your ability to believe you're okay. Many times that's what the problem is. We just don't think we are. Bottom line is, most of us are, most of us can be, and a lot of times it just takes a little bit of thinking help to start turning things around. So let's talk about what you do. First of all, a lot of depression is brought on by dehydration. Most people I talk to tell me, oh, I drink plenty of water. Then when we get right down to it, they're hardly drinking any. If you're not drinking enough water, and usually the rule of thumb is 50% of what your body weight is. So, for example, if you weigh 100 pounds, you want to drink about 50 ounces of water a day. If you weigh 200 pounds, it's about 100 ounces. I know it sounds like a lot. That's what your body requires to function properly, get the blood flow going, get the nutrients into the cells. If you're dehydrated, the brain is going to pull nutrients from the blood any way it can, which means it's going to start taking it away from other parts of the body. Other organs are going to suffer because of this. Drink water. Pay attention to it. The next thing is, most people get depressed because they're fearful of something. Fearful because they've just had surgery. Fearful because they're getting a divorce. Fearful because they're getting married. Fearful because they're having a baby. Fearful, fearful, fearful. Getting a job. There's a million excuses. A lot of times, people read books that talk about, well, if you do this, sometimes this causes depression. Even the placebo effect can cause us to get depressed if we believe whoever told us we're going to. What I want you to do is learn how to advocate for yourself. Now I understand there are cases where medical intervention is really required. And I'm going to ask all of you to understand I'm very clear on that. However, a lot of you are just kind of inducing yourself into some kind of psychotic state, depressing yourself through the way you think about things. The first thing you want to do is eliminate those virus words. Why, try, need, but, should, don't, and hope. And you might say, well, those are simple words. What can they have to do with it? What they have to do with it, each one of those words presupposes a negative presupposition. If I owed you $100 and tell you I'm going to pay you Friday, and I'll try to pay you by Friday, what do you really hear? Then probably not going to get paid. When you use that language with yourself, what happens is it doesn't believe you and it immediately creates confusion and a fight or flight gets triggered in your mind and the way you think and it creates stress and anxiety. The next thing you can really do is understand fear is non-existent. Danger exists, however fear is really a mental thought. 
Fear is the way you look at things. Fear is usually something that's in the future and you're looking at it with a negative expectation. Learn how to bring yourself back in the moment and focus on what's real right now. And most of the things we worry about haven't happened anyway. Remember, if you're focused into the future and worried about paying the bills or if you're going to get a job, you haven't not got the job yet. You haven't not not paid the bills yet. Bring yourself into right now and always ask yourself, what can I do today to prevent that? Because it hasn't happened yet. And also tell yourself, right now, everything's actually okay. I have the power, I have the ability right now to make a difference. These are just a few little hints, but these are things I work with with people every day and you wouldn't believe some of the nonsense people talk themselves into. And ask yourself, are you one of those people? I have thousands of people watching these videos all the time, writing me back saying, oh my gosh, I have never heard that before. This is common sense. This is not my ability to be very creative and come up with solutions. This stuff works. It's natural. It's easy. And I'm going to ask you, before you go to a doctor and start taking antidepressants, do these things first. Be proactive rather than reactive. And also understand that being depressed is not a bad thing because it's the opposite of being happy and secure. You got to have one to have the other. What you want to do is find the middle somewhere. Let's work on that. And if you know someone that has this challenge, help them with these kind of thoughts and these kind of ideas. It actually works. I've been doing this for a long time now. And every time I do this with someone and show them this, they usually pull out of the depression pretty easily. So until next time, this is Dr. G wishing you a great week. And remember, reach out and smile at someone. It can make all the difference in the world in someone's life. Till next time. You have a great week. Bye-bye.